He has to keep the ball down. If he comes up with it, he gets badly hurt. And there is Rene Arrocha, the Cardinal pitcher. He is a rookie, just like Eric Hillman. Arrocha last year, his first year of brace, a pro ball in the United States. Cardinals won the right in a lottery to sign him. He pitched at Louisville last year, his first year in pro ball, Triple A. He was 12 and seven. And Joe Coleman says, or Joe Torrey says, he has as good a stuff as any pitcher in the league. So this could be a real good pitching matchup. And he throws strikes. Arrocha leads the Cardinals on to the field. He's a 27-year-old right-hander. They had an advanced sale of 50,000 for this game. It's obvious not everybody has stuck around. But a big crowd will be on hand as the Mets and the Cardinals get set for battle on this Saturday evening that ends the month of July. A month, the second half at least of the month, that's been fairly good to the Mets. They've played much better the last two and a half weeks. They had the worst June in their entire Mets history that spans some 32 years. They won only six ball games. If they win tonight here in St. Louis on the final night of July, they will have won 13 games this month. And there are the numbers on Rene Rocha. And tonight, Arrocha makes his 17th start, his 19th appearance overall. He's already thrown 104 innings. The key for him is control. Look at the strikeout-to-walk ratio, 54 Ks, 12 walks. He's fairly hittable, opponents hitting him at 262. But he throws strikes, and he works ahead. And tonight, he faces the Met lineup that comes in hitting at 248. The lineup presented by Ford leading off for New York. It'll be the speedy Ryan Thompson. Not a prototype leadoff batter at all, but with Vince Coleman not playing, he is probably the best for the job. Joe Orsalak, the new everything man for the New York Mets, will be in left field batting second. Eddie Murray, an ideal number three hitter. Bobby Bonilla again playing third base and batting cleanup. Chico Walker will play second base tonight. Jeff Kinn has a tender hamstring, and they didn't want to play him on the turf here tonight. Charlie O'Brien will catch in bat sixth. Jeremy Burnett's the rookie right fielder, batting seventh. Tim Bogar will be at shortstop, batting eighth. And on the mound, Eric Hillman, the six foot ten left hander. Cardinals tied with Florida, believe it or not, defensively number eight in the National League. An outfield of Bernard Gilkey, Brian Jordan, and Mark Witten. They rotate four outfielders. Ray Lankford is not playing tonight. Todd Zeal, Tracy Woodson at the corners. Ozzy Smith, Jose Akendo up the middle. And Eric Pappas gets the start tonight. Tom Pagnazzi, who hits Dwight Gooden well, expected to be back in there tomorrow. It's 9-21 in St. Louis, and the first pitch of the game is a strike. Ryan Thompson, a 179 hitter for the Mets with a home run three RBIs. He's playing in his 22nd game at the big league level this year. He's been up there 56 times. There's that good breaking ball and a fly ball out to center. Easy for Brian Jordan. One down. Bill Cousy is the home plate umpire tonight. He's the junior member of the crew with Ed Montague at first, crew chief Bruce Fredding. At second base, and Mike Winters working third. It's really cooled off here. It was a hot, muggy afternoon. The storm blew in around 5.40 this evening, Central Time, and things have cooled off considerably. Feels like a fall evening right now. It dropped so much. And Joe Ursulak will step in, hitting 300. up there first pitch swinging and a pop fly left side Ozzy Smith is out and the wizard has it two down Ursulak went up swinging and Bob that's probably a pattern we'll see tonight Rene Rocha has a good reputation as a guy who likes to get ahead so you'll see opposing batters swinging early in the count and if Eric Hillman has the kind of control he's had his last two starts the Cardinals will be doing very much the same thing Arrocha has a fastball that rides and sinks, a curve and a good slider. That's his out pitch. We saw him get Ryan Thompson with it. He toys with the changeup, and he faces Eddie Murray with 67 RBIs stepping in. Eddie, a 282 hitter from the left side. He's hitting 270. And there's the sinking fastball over but low. with a one for four night last evening. And the 
same pitch, 2 and 0. Oh. Eddie is almost a dead sense to again get more than 75 RBIs. Imagine that in his whole career, he's never had less. RBI machine, consistent year after year. He was hacking on 2 and 0 oh and fouled it off to the left. Eddie, one of the few hitters, too, that does not wear batting gloves. And over the last month, a 336 hitter. A 2 1 pitch. Then he goes the other way with a two hopper. Todd Zeal had to back up a bit. And it's a easy 1 2 3 for Renee Arocha in the first inning. Mets go in order. And we'll have our first look at the Cardinals against Eric Hillman after this word from Chemical. Twenty-seven-year-old Eric Hillman makes his tenth start for the Mets, his fifteenth appearance, and he faces a Cardinal club second in the league, hitting a 274. They are primarily line drive type hitters. The leadoff batter, Bernard Gilkey, the left fielder. Ozzy Smith, the wizard, batting second, playing short. Brian Jordan in center field third. A very hot Todd Zeal batting cleanup playing third. Then Mark Witten, the right fielder. Eric Pappas, Tracy Woodson, Jose Okendo, and Rene Arocha. And a first pitch swing by Gilkey and a bouncing foul over third and down the left field line. Bernard Gilkey, a local guy who's done very well in the old hometown. 302 hitter last year when he played 131 ball games and he's a 319 hitter tonight. That's ninth best in the National League. Hillman down low with the breaking ball, two balls and a strike. But the important statistic for a leadoff man is how much he scores. Gilkey is eighth in the league having scored 65 runs. And he bounces one off his foot. That's why he wasn't running as it went down to Bobby Boney. It's a foul. And 2-2 two -two the count. Mike Winters, the third base umpire, checking for shoe polish. We'll see if we can see it hit his foot. Yep, no doubt about it. And the count 2-2 to the leadoff man with Ozzy Smith next. Looked like an off-speed pitch, and it was fouled off to the right side. Joe Torrey wants to play each of his outfielders, four of them, about four times a week. Gilkey, Jordan, and Witten to start tonight. Ray Lankford, one of the best young players in the game. Is the other. There's a fastball up high. Langford's power numbers are off dramatically so far this year. Now you had 20 home runs last year, only three this season. And there's a long one to left field. Goodbye. of hours to get this game underway and their first hitter of the night hits his 10th homer of the year and St. Louis has the early lead. Maybe not a good sign for left-hander Eric Hillman. We'll watch the location of the pitch. Hillman, a sinker slider pitcher, needs to keep the ball down. Here's Ozzie Smith. And he's a first pitch swinger out to short where Tim Bogart takes it, guns him wide of the bag but Murray stepped him out and that's the first down registered by Hillman. Now here's the location on the home run pitch to Bernard Gilkey where Gilkey is 10th home run of the year and the pitch was up and that's what Eric Hillman has to avoid. The next pitch to Ozzie Smith he got it down he got his ground ball out and he is a ground ball out type pitcher. That was Gilkey's 10th homer his 40th RBI. Last year at this time, everybody was talking about Lankford sort of uh, shoving this young man into the background, but this year it's Gilkey leading the charge of those young Cardinal players. Brian Jordan, another one of those. He's the newest outfielder in terms of major league experience. And he's held his own well at the big league level, hitting 284. Bogar had him played in the hole, has to hurry, and Murray can't come up with it. Jordan is headed for second base. 
And we'll wait for the scoring to see whether it's one and one or an error all the way. Bogart trying to throw him out on the dead run. That's not an easy thing to do. Bobby Bonilla makes a dive for it. He can't reach it. But Bogart comes up with it now, tries to throw him out on the dead run. The throw is low, and Eddie Murray can't get the ball into the pocket of his glove. They have not flashed a base hit on the board. They say E6, so it's a two-base error on the Bogart throw, his ninth error of the season. Bogar and Eric Kilman played college ball together at Eastern Illinois. Man at second now, one out, and Todd Zeal on fire is the hitter. He's at six homers since the All-Star break. He has 45 RBIs since the 1st of June. 45 of his 65. A ball and a strike. This is the best stretch of hitting Todd Zeal has enjoyed since coming up to St. Louis. Says he's never felt this relaxed at the plate. Hillman turns one over. The ball dives down and away, two and one. So the Cardinals have struck early. Now they've received some help from the Mets defense, and they have a chance for another run. The Bogar errorless streak is over as he makes his ninth of the year. And Hillman might have pulled the string on Zeal a bit. Two balls, two strikes. This Cardinal ball club is a good hitting ball club. And the hitting has had to carry the pitching over the last two weeks or so. The pitching, hard hit by injuries, has really been slumping. Cardinals off a three and seven road trip to Atlanta, Colorado, and Philadelphia when their pitching staff was shelled. They got a good effort from rookie left-hander Alan Watson here last night. Lee Smith with another save, his 35th. Now it's two balls, two strikes to Todd Zeal. Down low, count goes full. That's are awfully close to having a shift on against Todd Zeal. The way Chico Walker is playing almost behind the bag. Well, they were playing over there for Brian Jordan. And a high chopper to third. Bonilla has to wait for it. Time for the throw. Two down. And over to third base goes Brian Jordan. Harry Hillman, not a power pitcher at all. So most of your right-hand batters are going to be pulling the ball probably rather convincingly. And usually it's on a night like this when you have an Eric Hillman type on the mound. The third baseman gets a chance to show his skills. And Bobby Bonilla has looked comfortable at third. Tough error here last night that hurt the Mets. Also homered in that game last evening. But the slimmed down Bonilla has looked much more agile at third this year than he might have last year put in that situation. He had a monster home run last night here in St. Louis. Look out high and tight to Mark Witten. There's a young man who came up with Toronto a couple of years ago, shipped off to Cleveland. Blue Jays had an abundance of outfielders. They let Mark Witten go when they needed some pitching, and now he's found a real home here in the National League with the Cardinals. He's hit a team-leading 16 home runs. He's a switch hitter with power. And that tells you that the Cardinals have basically now replaced what they lost when they traded Felix Jose to the Royals because that's what he was, a switch hitter with power. But Witten may have more power than Jose. He also may have the best throwing arm of any right fielder in the National League. Runner way down the line at third. A chopper to Bonilla who got a late break, short hop, and he's got Witten by a half step at first. On Bernard Gilkey's homer, the Cardinals take a 1-0 lead against Eric Hillman and strand a runner. So it's Bonilla getting set to lead off the second for the Mets. We're back after a word from Bud Light. Middle of the batting order for the New York Mets in the top of the second here at St. Louis. Cardinals on the Bernard Gilkey homer. Leave it first inning behind with a 1-0 lead. Bob Carpenter with Bob Murphy tonight. Ralph Kiners in Cooperstown for the Reggie Jackson celebration tomorrow. Marvelous day tomorrow in Cooperstown, New York. Ralph Kiner was inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1975. It means so much to the Hall of Fame ceremonies to have as many Hall of Famers as possible attending each year. And I think tomorrow there will be about 35 Hall of Famers on the stand when Reggie is inducted. It's quite a spectacle. 
Tim McCarver on assignment today. He'll be with us tomorrow here in St. Louis when the Cardinals and Mets play a day game. Here's Bobby Bonilla, who homered last night, 22 on the year. And he's hacking at a low inside breaking ball from Rene Orocha. Tim had a real good ball game this afternoon in the Astrodome. Atlanta beating the Braves, and the Braves have now won 10 of 12 since they got Fred McGriff. What an impact he has had. Not only hitting home runs, but that makes about three or four guys hitting around him much better. He is such a good guy, such a class individual. Here's a 1-1 pitch to Bonilla. Breaking ball. Well done by Orocha. Bobby Bonilla thought he was all over it. Suddenly the ball dove way down and inside on him. And I think his reaction tells the story. He thought he had something to work with here. Good breaking ball by Rene Orocha. And that's a ball that a good left-hand hitter likes to put the golf swing on. I tell you, Bob, if uh, his slider is his best pitch, that last curveball is not a good sign for the Mets tonight. No, I would say not. He, he really has good stuff. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And Orocha trying to hit the corner, barely missed. I don't know why it is, but almost every pitcher from one of the Latin countries has a huge assortment of pitches. They can throw everything. They just learn how to throw every pitch you can think of. 3-2 delivery. And he's got Bonilla with a low fastball down around the knees. Might be having some unkind thoughts about the plate umpire Phil Cousy after that call. One thing you've noticed, though, Bobby does not complain anymore to the umpires since Dallas Green took over the ball club. That looked like a pretty good pitch. Not a bad call. And it looks like from the side view it crossed at or above the knee level. Four in a row now for Orocha. He faces Chico Walker, who plays second base tonight. Jeff Kent is nursing a hamstring. When a guy's nursing a hamstring, you hesitate to put him out there on AstroTurf. Walker, first pitch swinging, left field, right at Gilkey. And Orocha has five in a row. This is the way you pitch in Bush Stadium. You challenge hitters, you try to get ahead, keep the ball down if they hit a fly ball. Hopefully it's something where you've kept a hitter off balance and they're not able to jack it out of this big ballpark. Marvelous ballpark for a pitcher who relies on fly balls to get the hitters out. Here's Joe Coleman, Joe Torrey's pitching coach. His right-hander faces Charlie O'Brien, who doesn't play a lot normally against right-handers, but with Todd Hundley in the midst of a two for 41 slump, O'Brien gets the call this evening. A couple of years ago, Sid Fernandez pitched the game in this park. He got 10 putouts on a warning track. <laughs> that was before they brought the fences in. There's El Sid, who threw very well here last night. Oh yeah, he looked very good. Visiting with Mike Draper down in the Mets bullpen. was out ahead of that one, a foul out of play, left side. Probably get an idea of how much it cooled off that shot of Sid Fernandez. He's wearing his jacket. Well, he is from Hawaii, you know. Well, that's very true. <laughs> and you can't do any surfing here, although I thought you were going to be able to the way it rained for a while. I'm telling you, you could do some surfing on the Mississippi down by the river today. I had Ooh. a look. That thing is moving at a very fast clip southward. They say it will crest on Monday at 49 feet. The wall is 52. Hmm. That's nervous time. Flood news dominating this city. And it's raining again. Oh, no. A light sprinkle. We were told there appeared to be a two-hour window in which this game might be able to be completed. Well, you can see how concerned the fans are in St. Louis. This game was totally sold out. And at game time, the ballpark was full. It's less than half full right now, I would say. And that's because the fans are worried about getting home. So many roads are flooded out. Brian just did get a piece of it on three and two. Eric Pappas had the ball bounce off his mitt, basically lost the mitt on the swing. He's playing in place of Pagnazzi tonight. And a 3-2 again, and O'Brien watches it go down and away, and that's the first Mets base runner. It comes with two outs in the top of the second.
And to the plate against the right-hander will be the rookie Jeremy Burnitz. Did not appear in the ball game last night at the plate. The New York Met players have given him a new nickname. They call him Crazy Horse. Well, I guess that's appropriate for an Oklahoma State Cowboy who's now in the major leagues. Well, there was a time when the Mets had another crazy horse. He was a shortstop, and his name was Tim Foley. Now coaching first base for the Brewers. If Burnett has that kind of temperament, he's going to be something to watch. He plays with about as much intensity as any ball player I've seen in quite a while. Well, I know a skipper down in that third base dugout who likes that approach. There's a good back to a breaking ball by Arocha. That's that late breaking slider that he started outside at the last moment. It caught the corner. And now Burnett is in an 0-2 hole. He's got some hitting room on the right side, though a kendo plays him to pull. And you can play deep on this turf. Well, Kendo's actually on the outfield side of the line. And a high chopper. Bouncing on it is Pappas, and at first, Burnett's is gone. So are the Mets. They strand a runner, and after an inning and a half at Wet Bush Stadium, the Cardinals lead it 1 0. And here's a word from Coca Cola. How do you capture a killer? You go after him. Hunter. He's a cop who lives up to his name. It looks for me. Hunter. Sunday at 7, only on Channel 9. St. Louis with a 1-0 lead coming up in the bottom of the second. This copyrighted telecast is authorized under television rights granted by Sterling AA Enterprises LP solely for the entertainment of our audience. Strike one on the corner. Any publication, reproduction, or use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Sterling AA Enterprises LP and WWOR-TV is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is likewise prohibited. Eric Pappas has been quite a story for the Cardinals behind the plate. Tom Pagnazzi, of course, has established himself as the everyday catcher. But Pappas, a man who is not even on the Cardinals' 40-man spring roster, is now the very capable backup, and he's hitting 312. He played a game at first base last night. Greg Jeffries is hurt right now. Not seriously, he has a muscle spasm in his lower back. Two balls and two strikes. There is Greg Jeffries. He's having a career season. Jeffries hitting about 340. Perfect ballpark for him. Of course, they thought it was going to be perfect in Kansas City. And it's turned out even more so because he's back in the National League and has a big gap ballpark to work with here in St. Louis. There's a base hit to left by Pappas. Outfielders have to be careful tonight. And an outstanding play by Joe Ursula. He can really play the outfield. When that ball gets on the outfield turf tonight, it will skip wickedly toward the corners of the gaps. And Joe Orsalak did well to hold Pappas to a base hit. So we'll watch now as Orsalak has to go full speed toward the foul line, reach out, and make the stab off the carpet, spins around and holds him to a single. The infield is much drier, but the outfield is very treacherous. Here's Tracy Woodson, and Hillman has the corner. General Manager Joe McElvain gets a lot of telephone calls asking about the availability of a Joe Orsalak. Midnight tonight, the trade deadline. After tonight, you have to have waivers. And I've got one that might shock a few people, just handed to me. The Kansas City Royals have traded with the Pirates and obtained reliever Stan Belinda. There's a chopper by Woodson. Bonilla charging, forget it. Bonilla with no chance to make a play on Woodson and the Cardinals have first and second nobody out well the Royals have a chance to win they're trying to shore up their bullpen here's the half swing slow bouncer to third good play by Bobby Bonilla it would have been taking an unnecessary chance to throw to first base the pitchers that Pittsburgh got are John Lieber a 23 year old right hander and Dan Maselli, a 22-year-old right-hander. For Stan Belinda, who many feel still hasn't recovered from the postseason of 92 when the Braves got him in the NLCS and the Pirates went home. 
He only had five saves after the All-Star break last year. Well, we've picked up a left-hander and a right-hander for the pit in the last 24 hours. Jose Akendo and a great fastball by Hillman tailing to the outside corner. Pitcher is on deck. Okendo trying to maybe drive a run home here rather than just move the runners around. A chopper. That'll move the runners up. Hillman has one play. First base out by just a short margin. And the other runners move up. Hillman gunning out the hitter. And over to third base goes Pappas. Woodson down to second. Bob, yesterday, the Royals in a three-cornered trade came up with John Habian, a right-handed reliever, and now they pick up Stan Belinda, another right-hander. I think I said a left and a right. They're both right-handers. But the Royals are very much in the running in the American League West, so they're going for it. They got a David Cohn shutout last night. They're only three back of the White Sox. And here's Rene Orocha, not much of a hitter, two for 33. Mets in it on the infield. And the bunt is not out of the realm of possibility here. Rocha started his swing, couldn't stop at strike one. He has two RBIs. Runners holding and another weak swing, strike two. They must have a DH in Cuba. <laughs> Either that or the pitchers never get to take BP. They always said you can't get a, you got to swing your way off the island. You know you're not a selective hitter down in the Caribbean and get noticed by people in the States. So maybe those wild swinging outfielders and infielders won't let the pitchers in the cage down there. One ball two strikes to Orocha. Hillman throws a nasty one in the dirt. Charlie O'Brien knocks it down. He may be a weak hitter but this is an awfully big out for Eric Hillman. If Orocha delivers a base hit right now Eric Hillman is looking at nine miles of bad road. Pappas at third, Woodson at second with one out. Bottom of the second, Cardinals already lead the Mets 1-0. And a bouncer out to second. Runners are frozen. Batter thrown out by Chico Walker. Two down, and it stays 1-0. No chance at all for Pappas to break off third. He would have been out at the plate. But a big hand at Bush Stadium for the man who homered. Last inning, Bernard Gilkey took Hillman deep to left for his 10th of the year, his 40th RBI. It was Eric's fifth home run given up in 60 innings of work. He's dangerous, but you can't walk him for Ozzie Smith. been murder on righties and lefties this year. There's a little number up the middle. That will score a couple. And the Cardinals take a 3-0 lead. All three driven home by the leadoff man. Bob, that's a problem when you fall behind. The Cardinals had Gilkey played the pull and Eric Hillman threw one that really hurt the defensive alignment. And the Cardinals are not a team that lives by the home run. They have a 274 team batting average. They can all hit the ball sharply and get those timely hits. And that's what you call a real astroturf hit. Gilkey a running threat with two outs at first base and Ozzie Smith the hitter. Runner holding strike one. Ozzie had a recent stretch. Talk about making contact of 124 at-bats without a strikeout. He has fanned 13 times in 376 at-bats this year. And that, to me, sounds like a perfect number two man. Remember this time last year, all the debating about whether Ozzy should be re-signed to a big contract? And the fans wanted Ozzy re-signed. They clamored for him. They were clamoring for him in Houston. Astros made him a pretty good offer. 
But the Cardinals re-signed Ozzie. He's having as good a year as ever. And as long as he can play a specified number of games, he will automatically kick in with a new contract for the following year. Hits it hard. Stabbed up the middle by Chico Walker. But the Cardinals get two more runs on three hits. They strand their second runner of the night. Walker keeps the Mets out of further trouble as Ozzie's retired. So it's 3-0 Cardinals. Here's a word from Sharp. Top of the third, Cardinals three, Mets nothing. And you know, there's only one thing better than a Mets win, and that's celebrating with an ice cold Budweiser, the king of beers. If the Mets are to get a W tonight, they've got some work remaining. Top of the third, three nothing St. Louis. Bottom of the order, Tim Bogart, followed by Eric Kilman, the pitcher. And then back to the top for Ryan Thompson against Rene Arocha, who misses upstairs with the fastball, the ball and the strike. Bogar, a 238 hitter. There's that nasty slider that Arocha throws. Bogar, 0 for 2 last night, a 260 hitter over the last month and a half. So he's holding his zone, but not as good the last week or two as he was earlier. He's in the hole, 1 and 2. Big breaking ball, ball 2. Fastball jammed in. Hit down to third. Todd Zeal scoops it up. One down. Bobby, you and I were talking during the between innings break. Todd Zeal making the move from catcher to third base, and that enabled Joe Torrey to plug Tom Pagnazzi in. Then the Cardinals put J Greg Jeffries at first base. This is an organization that seems to know how to put its ballplayers in the best possible spots. Well, I think Joe Torrey showed a world of imagination with both of those moves. And those two moves have really been important to the St. Louis Cardinals. Eric Kilman, two for 18 this year, and a swing and a miss. Of course, Joe Torre made that exact same move as a ball player. Look at this. First base hit by the Mets, and it's by the pitcher, a solid one, out to right field. So the Mets have a runner on with one out here in the third, and back to the top of the order for Ryan Thompson. That may have been a little lapse in concentration by the right-hander, Orocha. He had handled the rest of the lineup easily, and then Hillman hit one solidly from it. Ryan Thompson flied to center his first time up. Ryan was a triple-A all-star at Norfolk. A 259 triple-A hitter. And there's a breaking ball that gets away. Hillman's in trouble. Uh -oh. And they've got him at first base. He thought about going to second. Stopped about a third of the way there and couldn't get back. Boy, he'll hear about this when he gets back to the dugout. Players will be laughing a little bit, but they'll be getting on him pretty good. He just got hung out to dry. He didn't know which way to go. Remember, a pitcher doesn't know that much about base running. They don't get that much practice. Now two outs, 1-0 the count to Thompson. And he fouls it. Let's take another look at Eric trying to get back. He dove for it. He did the best he could. No doubt about it, he's out. 1-1 one, one pitch to Ryan Thompson. And Arocha moves him off the plate with a fastball. Two and one. Thompson hit 259 at AAA with 12 homers, 34 runs batted in. Back with the Mets for a week now, and a good breaking ball by Arocha evens the count. Boy, he's got some wonderful talent. It's going to take him a while to mature, learn how to lay off of certain pitches, particularly the breaking ball, low and away the slider. He strikes out a lot, but... He can hit a ball awfully hard. 3-2 now. Bob, what do you think his best spot in the lineup will eventually be? Well, I think when he, say next year, for example, I would look for him to hit about sixth of the order. He's not a leadoff hitter. Rain falling again. 
A fastball and a high fly down the right field line. Mark Witten after it. He'll have to go into foul ground, but he can't get it. They had Ryan Thompson played out toward the gaps, and Mark Witten simply couldn't get there. One thing about Ryan Thompson, he really runs everything out hard. He was all the way to second base as we watched Mark Witten run into foul territory and stop himself against the railing. You saw how carefully he was stepping. It's a rubber warning track around the outfield here. It's not a gravel track or a dirt track. It's a rubbery surface that gets real slick when it's wet. There's a high fly out to center, but that's a graveyard for fly balls in this town. Ryan Jordan has it, and the Mets are gone in the third. After the one-out hit, the runner picked off, and that's it. Cardinals three, Mets nothing early still. Here's a word from Snapple. are pleased to announce two special events taking place at Shea the weekend of August 7th and 8th. On Saturday, the Mets Wise will host a sports auction to benefit the Leukemia Society in the Mets bullpen parking area, 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Bring the family on Sunday to watch the Family Day softball game between the Mets and their kids. The gates open at 12.10. For all ticket sales and schedule information or to charge tickets by phone, call the Mets ticket office at 718-507-TIXX during business hours, a per ticket surcharge is applicable. The weekend of August 7th and 8th, full of activities at Shea, and there's Joe Torrey, who has worn the Mets pinstripes. What a capable job he's doing at the helm of the Cardinals. Good to see Joe's brother Frank Torrey here at the game tonight. Frank was a very good Major League ball player, a first baseman with the old Milwaukee Braves, who more than once hit over 300. Swing and a miss by Brian Jordan to start the bottom of the third. Joe Torrey's brother, Frank, probably knows as much about baseball bats as anybody in the world, huh? Oh, absolutely. He was here in St. Louis in charge of the company for a long time, wasn't he? Yep. Adirondack, I believe, the company that made the bats, Louisville Sluggers. A ball and a strike to Brian Jordan, followed by Todd Zeal and Mark Witten, the Cardinals' three, four, five hitters in the bottom of the third as the rain continues to sprinkle at Bush Stadium. Hillman with a changeup. Tell me if my memory is faulty. Uh, wasn't Frank Torrey with Rawlings for a long time? I believe so. And here in St. Louis. He now lives in Florida. And a pop-up by Jordan. Straight up in the air. Charlie O'Brien in foul ground. And he's got it for the first down. Charlie O'Brien is a rancher and understands how to catch a ball that could have hit the silo. <laughs> That's great. Charlie's got a spread outside Tulsa down Oklahoma way. I wasn't watching. Was that a fair or foul? It ended up foul. Yep. Don Zeal takes one up and away. Bob, it's great to have you with us on TV tonight. Um, thank you, sir. Sure, the fans at home are maybe a little surprised and very happy to hear you with us on Channel 9 tonight. It's great to have you. Well, it's such fun. I had the good fortune to do it for about 20 years before moving over to do radio completely. And it's fun to do it again. Going the other way, Zeo lines out to Chico Walker, two down. Of course, Bob Murphy's not real popular in the Mets radio booth tonight. He stepped over here and had a good time with us while Todd Callis and Gary Cohen were filling all those rain delays tonight. Oh, they're young and strong. <laughs> no problems. I'm just... I'm just happy to be able to fill in for my real pal, Ralph Kiner. Ralph having a great weekend in Cooperstown. Here's Mark Witten and a first pitch swing. He fouls it off to the right and it's just over the Cardinal dugout. Ralph Kiner is a Hall of Fame ball player. We all know that, but he's certainly a Hall of Fame guy. Yes, he is. 
Well, you and Ralph have been around for a long time. And, uh, oh, only, just, thir only 32 years. Is that a long time? Uh, compared to most of my jobs, yes. A guy like Ben Scully's been doing the Dodgers for 43. I don't think he'll ever stop going. I hope not. Up and into Witten, who grounded to third his first time up. A ball and a strike with the bases empty and two down, and Hillman going right after everybody here in the third now has Witten one and two. And you folks will have Mr. Murphy bringing you the play by play for the second half of tonight's game. That's a fair ball. Bonilla couldn't get it down into the corner. Joe Orsalak plays the carom, and Mark Witten's into second base with a two-out double. Bobby Bonilla gave it a headlong dive, but on the turf, that ball is really moving. Mark Witten has been a great ball player for St. Louis, a terrific lift for them, and the Cardinals are the first to tell you they just were able to cash in on unfortunate circumstances. They got Mark Witten from Cleveland. Cleveland, of course, had their pitching staff just absolutely devastated by the tragic accident in Florida in spring training that cost the lives of two and almost took the life of Bobby Ojeda. As a result of that, Bob Cleveland had to make some trades to get some pitchers, and that's how the Cardinals got Mark Whitten. And he doesn't look like anybody's going to move him on a right field. Eric Hillman falls behind Eric Pappas, who singled and scored last inning. And with the rain falling in a 3-0 game, you might see Charlie O'Brien make a few visits to the mound. Some of the fans are headed for cover as the rain is falling harder. And uh, it would not be beyond the Mets or any ball club in this situation trailing to stall things just a bit. It's coming down harder now. That's pretty obvious the way the fans are going for cover. One ball, no strikes to Pappas. And he is... Fouling one off to the left. I think you'll see some of the Cardinals swinging early. They want this ball game to move along and possibly get through those four and a half innings they might need. Well, the weatherman had said that we would have a two-hour window. I think somebody sneaked over and slammed the window. <laughs> yeah, it's only really been about an hour window. Ball game got underway at 9.21 St. Louis time. It's now 10.07 Central. Here's a ball and a strike pitch, and it's a breaking ball in the dirt. We just had a wonderful shot of umpire Bruce Frimming, the senior umpire, the crew chief. He has to make the call. If I ever saw a guy with an unhappy look on his face, it was Bruce Frimming. There he is. What a good umpire. He was born to be an umpire. Hillman pours one in, letter high, two balls, two strikes. They call him a clone out of Al Barlick. <laughs> Al Barlick, of course, is in the Hall of Fame at Cooperstown. Oh, one of the all-time greats. Two balls, two strikes to Pappas. And Hillman throws one over below. That fills the count three and two with Tracy Woodson, the on-deck hitter. There's the first baseman. Will he bat here in the third, or will Hillman be able to get after Pappas? Bouncer up the middle to his right walker. Plants the foot, throws. Murray digs it, and the Mets are out of the inning. Mark Witten's two-out double wasted. Cardinals have stranded a runner in each of the first three, but they lead by three. And here's a word from Bud Light. A violent hurricane leaves Darien trapped with a killer. You don't really think you're going to get away with this, do you? On the next Time Tracks, Wednesday at 8 on Channel 9. On to the fourth inning in St. Louis where the rain continues to fall. The Mets lead, or rather trail 3-0 with Joe Orselak due up on our American Express financial update. We'll get things updated for you momentarily as of Friday's close. There it is. Dow Jones down 7.27. Uh, S&Ps are down over two points. Gold is up and silver slightly up. That's for the week in review on our American Express financial update. In the top of the fourth, Joe Orselak. One ball, no strikes. He popped his short his first time up. He got a fastball, and he hits it hard to right field. Going back is Witten near the track. One out. Let's take a look at Joe Orselak's swing. 
His eye right on the ball. Good level swing. Drives it hard. Bob, he's another guy who chokes up on the bat. We know that Barry Bonds does it, of course. It, it doesn't hurt his home run production at all, does it? Not at all. He's got 31 now. Giants playing in Colorado tonight behind Billy Swift, who's won 14 ball games. Here's Eddie Murray. And a breaking ball, low and inside. That's hitting coach Tom McCraw. Spends an awful lot of time talking and working with the young hitters in particular. And he has particularly been trying to get Todd Hundley to choke up a little bit on the bat. Todd has a, just likes being down on the knob. Some hitters get comfortable there, and it's hard to move them. Well, isn't that what Major League Baseball is all about? Making adjustments as you go? You have to. I mean, it doesn't take long for the word to get around if you've got a weakness. You have to make those adjustments from year to year as they learn more about you. One ball, one strike to Murray. There's that slider inside corner, strike two. That's a good-looking pitch. Orocha throws it. Hitters think it's a fastball. At the last moment, it's got that little snap to it. Almost unhittable, huh? That's his out pitch. Let's see what he throws on one and two to follow it up. Outside target. It's the fastball, and Murray has to reach to follow it off. Not too many hitters will hit the ball out of this ballpark the other way. So going away on two strikes is a good strategy in this spacious yard in St. Louis. Jeremy Burnett's pulled it off. Rocha lost the grip on that curveball. As the rain continues to fall steadily, two balls, two strikes. We're in the top of the fourth. That rain is coming down pretty steady, isn't it? This is what it rained like for the better part of three hours here tonight. There was a real cloud burst at around 5.40, an hour and 20 minutes before game time. This is such a tough call for the crew chief, the senior umpire, Bruce Fremming. These people have waited around an awful long time trying to see a ball game. Cardinals involved in a pennant race. Chasing those Phillies. Umpires are always aware of the crowd, too. They realize that it's a sellout here tonight. Over 50,000 tickets sold and how important that is to the ball club operation. There's Bruce. Has a beautiful home in Vero Beach, Florida now, but he's from Brown Deer, Wisconsin. And I asked you about it, he said, hey, I still got my place in Brown Deer. <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Murray. One out, base is empty, top of the fourth. And the fastball misses outside. Mets have only had two base runners. A second inning, Charlie O'Brien walk. A third inning, Eric Hillman base hit. He was picked off when a ball got away from Pappas, and he wandered too far off first. And Murray's got a fair ball into the left field corner. Bernard Gilkey over to dig it out, and Eddie Murray heading for second base. With an extra base hit, his 17th double of the season. Eddie, Eddie has always racked up an awful lot of two base hits. Last year with the New York Mets, He had 37 doubles. And that was the most he had had in several years. It was a big year at bat for Eddie Murray. Bobby Bonilla has been hitting more double, more home runs than doubles this year, although he's starting to catch up in doubles recently, and that's very unusual for him. He could get the Mets right back in it here. There's a breaking ball that gets away, and Eddie Murray cruises over to third base. It's been called a wild pitch. And Zorocha, that's the second time in about the last three or four minutes he's lost the grip on a breaking ball. Boy, that will happen to you on a rainy night. One ball, no strikes. And Orocha, who lives with a great breaking ball, the slider and the curve, has to be careful now with a man at third base. Doesn't get the call on that one. That's the sinking fastball down and away from the left-hander, 2-0. So the Mets down by three with a runner at third and one out. Bobby Bonilla trying to swing them back in it here. 
And he's got a base hit to right field that scores Murray. It makes it a 3-1 ball game as Bobby Bonilla has his 61st RBI. Both Bobby Bonilla and Eddie Murray are on track to drive in 100 runs this year. Kind of like that low inside breaking ball, put a golf swing on it, base hit. Murray home. Chico Walker, the tying run now at the plate. And a chopper to the right side foul. One thing about the Cardinals, Bob, they play so well at home. So do the Philadelphia Phillies. The Cardinals, for example, this year playing in St. Louis, have won 33 and lost only 18 games. 15 over 500 and they're a respectable one under 500 on the road. You break even on the road, play like that at home, you've got a chance to win it. Arocha pours in the breaking ball. 0-2 to Walker who flied to left his first time. Well, they're a lot to win 50 or more games at home this year. When you can do that, you should be awfully close to 100 wins. talking earlier tonight to C.J. Cherry, the Cardinals traveling secretary, who came up with a great term for the baseball that was played when the Cardinals went to Colorado. They called it arena baseball. I like that. Because of the high scoring. It takes your pitching staff about two weeks to recover from a visit to mile high. Cardinals had a three and seven road trip when they started at Atlanta, the launching pad, went from there to the Rocky Mountains, and then went to Philadelphia where the Phils swept them three times. And a one-two pitch. High chopper. Ozzie Smith has to hurry. The throw safe at first base. Walker out of the batter's box in good fashion hitting left-handed. Ozzie did all he could. And the Mets have two on, one out. Beautiful play by Ozzie Smith. Now this is a play that Ozzie will practice during infield drills. You'll see him before every home game come charging in on that Aston turf hop, and he does it better than anybody else by far. Look at that. He didn't get him, but what a play by Ozzie. Now the tying runs are on base. He can still do it, the Wizard. Didn't make the All-Star team this year for the first time in over a decade. Charlie O'Brien walked his first time. Half swing over the mound. Ozzie charging again. Slower runner. Two down. On the play, Bobby Bonilla goes to third and Chico Walker to second. Almost a duplicate of the last one. As Bob mentioned, the fact that Charlie O'Brien is a very slow runner made this an easier play for Ozzie Smith. Ozzie busy in the rain here in the fourth inning. And a good spot for the rookie, Jeremy Burnitz, with the tying runs on base. But he goes up and swings at a high outside fastball, and that will strand a couple. Gilkey puts it away, and the Mets settle for a run on three hits, stranding two. They've left three. Arocha and the Cardinals still lead it 3-1 in middle of the fourth. And here's a word from Nobody Beats the Wiz. Yeah, the Cardinals aren't in a hurry. Welcome back to Bush Stadium in St. Louis and the bottom of the fourth inning coming up. Bottom of the order for Tracy Winston. And the Cardinals lead the Mets by a score of 3-1. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Nobody Beats the Wiz Home Entertainment Centers. For everything in home electronics, music, and movies, Nobody Beats the Wiz. And by the New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages. No other book can match it, a Bell Atlantic Company. Carpenter along with Bob Murphy in downtown St. Louis. That's about as sad as you can look when your team's in a pennant race and winning. <laughs> well, there's nothing going on right now. Wait till the Cardinals come to bat. Then watch that expression change. <laughs> well, Tracy Woodson comes to bat against Eric Hillman. It has been an emotional couple of weeks for this area. There are a lot of sad faces around St. Louis. A lot of folks facing 
bigger tragedies than they ever dreamed. Bobby Bonilla will cut it off in front of the shortstop, one out. Yeah, the Cardinals are in a pennant race, and things are okay at Bush Stadium, but there's sort of an error of sadness around the city. Oh, there's just such an emergency and such devastation. So many people have lost their business. So many people have lost their homes. And they really don't know the worst has yet to come. Yeah, this isn't like a tornado that sweeps in and disappears. Effects of this will be into the fall. Long night for some as they waited a long time to get this game underway. And a strike to Jose Akendo. And normally the game would be over by now. Kendo bounced back to the mound his first time up, and Hillman hits the outside corner beautifully. One ball, two strikes. Jose, sort of a forgotten man at times this year. And a two-hopper, Bobby Bonilla backing up. You can do that on the turf if you've got the arm, two down. Well, we mentioned very early on in the ball game that when you have a left-handed breaking ball pitcher on the mound, the third baseman is usually in for a very busy night. And Bobby Bonilla seems to be getting all of the attention. And he's handling it very, very well. That's his fourth assist. He's had to die for a couple of balls near the line. And the pitcher is due up. And on the first pitch, Orocha hits it well to center. It is over the head of Ryan Thompson. Out to the 4-0-2 mark. And a two-out double for the pitcher. His third hit of the year in 35 at-bats. Boy, baseball is absolutely wonderful. The last time, or the first time he came up to bat in the game tonight, he looked like as weak a hitter as you have ever seen. He had a couple of terrible swings at pitches, and now he comes up and drives it over the head of the center fielder. Well, he had to return the favor to Hillman, who singled off him two innings ago, and Ryan Thompson simply had no way to catch up with that well-hit ball. Well, he was playing him naturally pretty shallow. And now the big problem for the Mets is the man at the plate. He's driven home all three St. Louis runs. Bernard Gilkey with a solo homer in the first, a two-run single in the second. Hillman ahead of him. Jams him with a fastball that misses. One ball, one strike. They say you can't play baseball in your hometown, but Bernard Gilkey is doing it awfully well. Shot to short, Bogart. And that's it. Cardinals strand another runner. Four tonight, but they've scored three. And after four in the rain, it's about to become an official ball game. Mets do up, down by two. Here's a word from Budweiser. Mets fans get a signed, limited edition Sid Fernandez photo for a $10 donation to the Leukemia Society, 603rd Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Well, you can't bother that guy. The game is on, and it's about to become official here as the Mets come up with their 8, 9, and 1 hitters in the top of the fifth inning. They take their baseball very seriously here in St. Louis. And a great slider by Orocha, a swinging strike to Tim Bogart. Bogart pulled the ball first time up and bounced to third. Orocha working a little too quickly for his taste. He asks for time and gets it from... Bill Cuzzy, the home plate umpire. I don't think he was ready at all for that last pitch. No guys who play defense will tell you they love a man on the mound who works quickly. And Orocha gets the ball and he's ready. And especially on a night when it's raining. 1-1 one, one pitch. The breaking ball foul, 1-2. and two. They had something going against this right-hander last inning, but with two on, two out, Jeremy Burnitz got a bit impatient. Went up there hacking and probably hit a ball out of the strike zone to the glove of Gilkey in left field. Bogar hits one out deep to left field, and this one is caught at the wall. Bogar making a bid for his second homer of the year. Bernard Gilkey pulled it down about 370 feet away. Quite a night for Bernard Gilkey, the Cardinal left fielder. 
He has knocked in all three of the Cardinal runs, and he has this one lined up just right. Not a spectacular catch, but a good play. They brought the wall down. It's only eight feet high here in St. Louis. It used to be almost 11 feet high before they brought the fences in. And here's Eric Kilman. Takes a strike. And all around St. Louis today, they're wishing all the walls were a lot higher. Well said. Change up, swing and a miss, 0 and 2. And that was quick. Renee Arrocha with a second strikeout of the night. Talk about a lady who knows her baseball tonight. Toyota salutes Ms. Lynn Rapowitz of Middle Village, New York, a fifth grade teacher at PS229. And she integrates sports and all of her teaching using location and batting averages to teach students about geography, division and decimals, and research skills, compiling data in all major league ballparks. For her work, Ms. Lynn Rapowitz was our guest at Shea recently, had a chance to meet with Jeff McKnight, and thanks to Lynn of Middle Village for her outstanding work. And last night, Alan Watson from Middle Village, a rookie for the Cardinals, beat the New York Mets. That stopped the St. Louis losing streak and got the Cardinals back to within six of the Phillies. Ryan Thompson at the top of the order. Now he's in the hole quickly. No balls, two strikes. Cardinals a strike away from having this an official ball game. Even if the weather gets worse. Top of the fifth, St. Louis three, New York one. Cards have out hit the Mets, 6-4. Thompson is fly to center twice tonight. On the corner, and he is gone. Arocha fans two in a row, three in the game. And halfway through, the Mets continue to trail St. Louis by a 3-1 score. And here's the word from your Tri-State Toyota dealer. A kid on the streets will do anything to survive. This is the way it usually ends. On The Untouchables. Monday at 9 on Channel 9. Bottom of the fifth, Eric Hillman back out to the mound. Cardinals lead the Mets 3-1, and to take you the rest of the way with the play-by-play, -play, here's Bob Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Ozzie Smith up now against Eric Hillman. Ozzie hitting at 288. Bouncing ball, oh, nice stab by Eric Hillman. An easy comebacker, 1-3 put up. One out and nobody on. It'll bring up the football star, Brian Jordan. Early in the year, Brian Jordan was playing... For Triple A Louisville playing awfully well. Joe Torrey likes him. Joe Torrey likes all four of his outfielders, and he wants all four to play about the same amount of time. Well, Jordan better like baseball. He signed a $2.3 million three-year baseball-only contract. So for now, he's given up on his NFL career. Inside and high ball one. He probably made a very wise move. But he was a very good defensive back in the NFL. Gifted athlete. Jordan has reached on an air and fouled out to the catcher. And on the inside corner, Eric Hillman makes the count. One ball and one strike. St. Louis, three runs, six hits, no errors. New York, one run, four hits, and one error. It is now an official ball game. Douse foul down to third. Bucky Dent on the pitching lines at third. Who will ever forget Bucky Dent? And the famous home run over the Green Monster at Fenway Park in Boston. Delightful man. Chris Chambliss is also on the coaching staff for Joe Torrey. Inside and low, Chris is the hitting coach. The pitching coach is Joe Coleman. Jack Hubbard is the first base coach. And the dugout coach is Hall of Famer Red Shandies. Line drive, base hit down the left field line. Orselak running toward the line. Jordan digging for a double. The throw comes in wide. And a two-base hit for Brian Jordan. He caught a breaking ball just right. Lined it over the head of Bobby Bonilla. Look at that rain coming down now. Doesn't matter in terms of getting the ball game in. Jordan with a great speed has three triples. Vix is his sixth double of the year. He's also hit five home runs, and they really feel he has unlimited potential. Lots of tools, especially offensively. 
That is the seventh hitter. Now Charlie O'Brien, the catcher, is out on the mound, and Charlie is worried about the condition of the mound. He thinks that maybe Eric Hillman is slipping around a little bit out there from the dugout mound. He was kind of looking into the dugout. The man to make the call for the ground crew, of course, would be the senior umpire, Bruce Fremming. Bruce is umpiring at third and getting soaking wet. Now here's Todd Zeal, and he is red hot. An appeal play at first, and he did not miss the bag going around. Well, after about the top of the fourth, they brought the ground crew out. Bruce Fremming had them apply that turface compound, that light-looking material that's on the base paths and the pitcher's mound batter's box. That soaks up the water. There he goes, stealing third. The throw by Charlie O'Brien. They may get him. Out at third base. Charlie O'Brien nails Brian Jordan. He was trying to steal third with one man away. O'Brien continuing his outstanding defensive work. It appears that Bonilla might have missed the tag. Brian Jordan evidently slid right around the glove of Bobby Bonilla who puts the glove down in the middle of the base and then Jordan slides to the outfield side looked up to third base umpire Mike Winters and it's sort of a habit at the major league level if the ball beats you they call you out even if you're not tagged and I think that's what happened right there Charlie O'Brien throws about as well as any catcher of the National League he's throwing out about 38 or 39 percent and for a catcher that's a very high percentage Benito Santiago of the Marlins is throwing about 20% out. Todd Zeal is the hitter, and he is hot. Held on the swing, breaking ball. They want the half swing checked out. And the count is two and one. In the last 11 games Todd Zeal has played, he has knocked in 19 runs. He's the Cardinal RBI leader. And a strike call for two and two. Eric Hillman, his last start, shut out the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium. The start before that, he had eight scoreless innings against San Diego. Tonight, his stuff has not been that commanding. Over, strike three called, and Todd Zeal looking for something else. He knew it. No runs, a double, and nobody left on. At the end of five in St. Louis, the Cardinals three and the Mets one. Now, here is a word from Delta. Sixth inning now. Joe Orsolak leading off against Rene Arocha and a breaking ball in the dirt. It is ball one. Cardinals three, Mets one, top of the sixth inning. They have, were out with a diamond dry to make the footing better for the hitters. Bouncing ball right at Ozzy Smith. The 38 year old Wizard of Oz makes the play one down. They had a great one here that played well into his 40s. AT&T, the best in the business, salutes Stan the Man Musio. The best in the game. He holds the NL record for most consecutive years hitting. 300 or more at 16 consecutive seasons. 331 career batting average. A Hall of Famer elected in 1969. Stan the Man. And I hope Stan Lee is at Cooperstown for the Hall of Fame ceremonies tomorrow. Wonderful man. Always carries a harmonica with him and loves to play it, loves to entertain. Always says, what do you say, what do you say, what do you say? <laughs> That's right. Every time you see Busey, what do you say, what do you say? Ground ball hit hard by Eddie Murray, base hit to right field. So now Eddie is two for three. He doubled his last time up. For the New York Mets, their fifth hit off Rene Rocha. Bobby Bonilla, the cleanup batter, will step in. Bobby got his 61st RBI of the year. He drove home Eddie Murray in the fourth inning. Mets are hanging tough in the ball game. Cardinals had a 3-0 lead after two innings of play. Now we're in the sixth inning, and it's a 3-1 ball game. They'll play Bobby Bonilla deep and a step to right. And it's quite foul on strike one. Incredible how it cool things off when the Cold front of the thunderstorms moved through the area. It's still raining here. Middle of the afternoon, it was about 93 or 94 degrees, maybe 95. Not now. Mayor Rocha, the 
facing outside. One ball and one strike. Rene is 27 years old. He was a star on the Cuban national team. Defected. Cardinals drew his name out in a lottery to determine who would have a chance to sign him. It's low, ball two. The best pitcher the Mets have ever had to this point in time, Tom Seaver, they claim pretty much the same way. They got him in a lottery. Only three teams had their name in the hat. The Mets drew out the name. Hit of the year down the left field line. On the run is Bernard Gilkey. Nearing the left field line, foul ball. It goes out of play off the bat of Bobby Bonilla. You hesitate when you say Tom Seaver was the best pitcher the Mets have ever had because of Doc Gooden. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure after Doc has been around as long as Tom, their records are probably going to be pretty comparable. They both are the only two to win 150 games for the New York Mets. And they both won 150 at about the same age. Doc got there just a little earlier. They both have given the Mets an awful lot of excitement. Doc will be on the mound tomorrow against Real Cormier for the Cardinals. They both pitched on a world championship ball club. Seaver in 69, Doc in 86. And a swing and a miss by Bobby Bonilla. Beautiful change by Rene Arrocha. That is his fourth strikeout. Bobby Bonilla having some words with Phil Cuzzy. This goes back to that at bat in the second inning when Bonilla was called out on a fastball down around the knees. It was a swinging strike three this time, but a few words exchanged, and Bonilla seemed satisfied with the explanation of the home plate umpire. Had something to do, obviously, with one of the other pitches. Chico Walker will be the batter. Chico had a hit his last time up. Chico is one for two. Mets are trailing three to one, middle game of a three game series. And yes, Doc Gooden pitches tomorrow afternoon. Had a breaking ball. Yes, he did swing. You're wondering why Tom Pagnazzi is not catching here tonight. Tomorrow, a day game following a night game, Joe Torrey wants Pagnazzi in the lineup tomorrow because Pagnazzi is hitting 500 against Doc Gooden. And not many people do that. Low inside, one and one. He has 13 hits in 26 times at bat against Doc Good. Ozzie Smith also has done well against Doc over the years. The 1-1 delivery, towering fly ball straight away to center field. Easiest to play, standing under it, Brian Jordan, and the side retired. No runs. They hit it a man left on. Middle of the sixth inning in St. Louis. Cardinals three and the Mets one. Now here's a word from your Tri-State Toyota dealer. In the home sixth inning, the Cardinal right fielder Mark Witten, hitting number five of the order, will be batting against Eric Hillman. Eric has now gone 33 innings without walking a batter. Tonight he has walked none and struck out one. Missing low and away, ball one. Mark Witten doubled to left field his last time up. Hitting at 254, and he has real good power. He leads the Cardinals at home runs with 16. Good breaking ball by the tall left-hander, and Eric Hillman is pitching pretty well. He struggled the first two innings. It looked like it might be a bad outing for him. But to his credit, he hung tough. He hit into, uh, pitched at least into a little bit of bad luck, Bob, back in that second inning. A scratch hit by Woodson, put a couple of men on, and then with two outs, just a little liner off the end of the bat that squirted through on the turf up the middle about that location off the bat of Gilkey, but not hit nearly that hard. So, Hillman has uh, basically stopped the Cardinals since then, but a little bit of tough luck back in the early innings. Ground single through the middle by Mark Whitten. It'll be the eighth hit of the game for St. Louis, and it brings up Eric Pappas. Remember a pitcher named Milt Pappas? Mm-hmm. Pitched for the Baltimore Orioles, one of the baby birds. Won 100 games in the American League, over 100, and 99 in the National League. He just missed the distinction of having won over 100 in both leagues. That's a distinction Dennis Martinez is approaching. 
if he sticks in the National League a little longer. That's a big if. The 1-0 delivery, grounder foul. But it's hard for me to believe, Bob, that Montreal, who's still in the race, oh, very much so, would let go of Dennis Martinez. He's been one of the rumored pitchers around baseball. But it would be a tough call for Montreal to make because Montreal is certainly not out of it. And they have a very talented young ball club. They haven't really pitched well all year long. But now Ken Hill is back. And the hitter, Eric Pappas, lays off. Pappas, such a pleasant surprise to the Cardinals. He has been a minor league ball player all his life. But he started to look like a hitter last year. He was signed as a six-year free agent. Was playing at Louisville, and when Pagnazzi got hurt, they called him up. There goes the runner. And a line drive caught by Chico. Easiest double play in the world now. All he does is throw to Eddie Murray, double play. So the hit and run play backfires. Witten was running. The line drive hit to Chico Walker. Pappas stung the ball to the right side. Only problem was location right at Walker. And with Mark Witten running, no problem at all as the Mets registered their 96th double play of the year. You know, they're gaining on the top of the National League and turning double plays. And in the early part of the year, they were dead last. But Jeff Kinn and Tim Bogar have worked awfully well together. I think the Mets are now about third of the National League in turning double plays. And it's just off the outs on the outside corner to Tracy Woodson. One ball and one strike to the former Los Angeles Dodger, Tracy Woodson. Ground ball hit the shortstop. Bogar looks it into his glove, throws on to Eddie Murray, and that retires the side. No runs, a hit, nobody left on. At the end of six in St. Louis, the Cardinals three and the Mets one. Now here's a word from your Tri-State Ford dealer. your colors with the Mets MasterCard from Chemical Bank. If you have one, use it. If not, call 1-800-233-METS to apply. Peter and Kane face off Freeze! with a vengeful survivalist on Kung Fu, the legend continues. Wednesday at 9 on Channel 9. Seventh inning in St. Louis. The rain has really tapered off now. All the umbrellas have been folded up. Or almost all of them, anyhow. And Charlie O'Brien will try and get it going against Rene Arocha, the Cuban-born right-hander. And a fastball for a strike call. Jeff Ennis getting up at the bullpen for New York. Mets pitcher due to bat fourth in the inning. Off the outside corner, one ball and one strike. Jeff has a brother about twice his size, and they look exactly alike. I'm walking through the hotel lobby. There was no doubt in my mind who it was. We had never seen him before. And a breaking ball strike on the outside corner to Charlie O'Brien. And he's not happy about that one from Phil Cousy. It appeared to be that late breaker from Orocha. Strike three call to Charlie O'Brien. That one looked like a good one. That's five strikeouts now for Rene Arocha. Rene trying to win his eighth game of the year. And he's certainly going to lower his 3.5 ERA if he keeps pitching like this. Three of those strikeouts, Bob, called third strikes. Bonilla in the second. And then Thompson ending the fifth. And O'Brien leading off here in the seventh. Very comfortable night in St. Louis after all the rain washed the air out. Burnett's holding on a breaking ball. They say he went around. Bill Cousy made the call from behind the plate. Arocha should have plenty of stamina. He has not thrown that many pitches. Bouncing ball hit the short. Here comes Ozzie Smith. Throwing on the run. Close play, but he got it. Tell you about Jeremy Burnett. He can run. He's a big guy, but he can really go down the line. And there's a 38-year-old who can run. Ozzy has turned himself into an outstanding base stealer. Always had the great defense. On the Toyota American League scoreboard, the Yankees and Blue Jays both won today. Baltimore 
knocked off the Red Sox tonight, so the Orioles stay four back. Boston falls a game and a half back. Royals lose in the West after Texas won today. They were 8-2 winners behind Kevin Brown at Oakland. Tim Bogar, the hitter, and a one-strike count. And as the score showed, the White Sox winning again tonight. And the White Sox, of course, acquired Tim Belcher from Cincinnati. That'll certainly shore up their starting rotation. And a two-strike count on Tim Bogar. That's her up against a formidable right-hander here tonight in Rene Arocha. He is really going to be a good one. Low and away, one ball and two strikes. Joe Torre raves about Rene Arocha. Compares his stuff with just about anybody in the league. It'll lead a foul ball back toward the crowd and out of play. Final game of the series tomorrow with Doc Gooden on the mound. Real Cormier, a left-hander, takes Joe McGreen's spot in the rotation to pitch against New York. Hit foul down the left field line. And Joe McGrain has had a real up and down season. Came back and struggled after his injury. Then he got hot for about a month and now he's in the bullpen after failing miserably on the Cardinal road trip just completed. Cormier can be tough. He is a crafty type left-hander, throws a lot of breaking pitches. And so not fared well against left-handers. They haven't seen all that many. But for the year against the starting left-handed pitcher, the Mets have won six while losing 23. They lost to a left-hander, Alan Watson, last night. That's well, just off the corner. Rene Arocha wanted that one. He was on his way to the dugout. It might have been ruled just a little high by Phil Cuzzy. Looked like it had the plate, but he must have called it high. Pitching two and two. Got a breaking ball low outside, ball three. When you look at Rene Arocha, he reminds you a little bit in appearance of Bobby Valentine. Two outs, nobody on, three and two on the hitter, Tim Bogar. High pop fly. Coming in is Todd Zeal, the third baseman, diving! Oh, what a catch by Todd Zeal. The catcher didn't realize where it was or he would have gone out and made the grab. And Todd Zeal had to come as hard as he could come. He made a headlong dive and a fantastic catch. Side retired. They're out one, two, three, middle of the seventh inning. The Cardinals three and the Mets one. Now here's a word from your Tri-State Toyota dealer. Jose Oquendo leading off of the Redbirds in the home seventh inning. One ball and one strike. Jose has played only sparingly this year as kind of an extra part, playing either second or short, but he's terrific on a ball club. And it's Bloop foul back into the crowd and out of play. He was the regular second baseman for a couple of years. Along came Geronimo Pena, a very talented player. Pena would be playing, but he's on the DL. He's been hurt a couple of times this year. Yeah, he has a broken left foot. It's going to be several weeks before Geronimo Pena is ready to return. That is hit of the year to right field fairly deep. Jeremy Burnett's lining it up. That'll retire Jose Oquindo, one man down. Bob, the Associated Press is reporting that about 19 minutes from now at 12.20 a.m. Eastern Time, the Oakland Athletics will release something regarding the Ricky Henderson situation. They will have a statement to make in less than 20 minutes regarding Ricky Henderson. All signs point to him heading for Toronto to this evening. Ground ball hit down to third by Arocha. Bobby Bonilla with his six gents makes the throw two men down. Well, we'll certainly be here another 20 minutes, so we should have the story. Can you imagine what the Blue Jay batting order would be like if they get Ricky Henderson to bat leadoff? A guy like Devon White, who's as talented as he can be, probably will be hitting eighth. Or with no pitcher hitting over there, maybe even ninth, two speed burners back to back in that lineup to go along with John Olaru. Joe Carter, and others. Robbie Alomar, one of the best all-around players in the game. Pat Gilly getting quite a reputation for making big deals. They don't call him Stan Pat anymore, no, do they? Oh, they sure don't. They did the first few years. But he can really pull the trigger on those blockbusters. Guilty, a smack through the middle for a base hit. It is Bernard Guilty night in St. Louis. 
Gilkey collecting his third hit. He has knocked in all three of the Cardinal runs. And he's batting at about the mid-320 range now with his three for four. Now, he came in the league's number nine hitter at 319. All he's done is driven home all three St. Louis runs, three for four, and Mel's on the phone to the bullpen. And the Cardinals have a 340 hitter on the bench in Greg Jeffries. Jeffries is having a career season. He'll be back in a day or two. And Hillman throws over. Mel Stottlemyer talking to the bullpen and Johnny Stevenson, the bullpen coach, will have somebody up in just a moment. Jeff Ennis. Now the Wizard takes one inside and low it's ball one. St. Louis three runs on nine hits. New York one run on five hits. Bernard Gilkey has been the whole show for the Cardinals. And it looks like Joe Torre has something in mind for Ray Lankford. In case the Mets would uh, bring in the right-hander, Lankford could be hitting for Brian Jordan next if the inning goes that far. And a beautiful breaking ball by Eric Hillman. Ozzie does not get it. One ball and one strike. Of course, the pitcher is due to bat first for the Mets in the eighth. Thomas Green would prefer that this inning end right here. Hit for Hillman and then come with it this next inning. Eric Hillman has four scoreless innings in a row at the moment. That's it foul down the left field line. You need to have somebody down there to protect your catcher. Who's warming up the pitcher. Usually one of the extra pitchers who will not be working. One and two on Ozzy Smith. Ozzy 0 for 3 does not get many overs. He's hitting tough luck tonight. Screaming liner stabbed by Chico Walker in the second. Hard comebacker stabbed by Eric Hillman in the fifth inning. That's real profanity for a ball player, 0 for 4. And a bouncing ball slowly hit off the mound quickly as Hillman foul ball. That came off his foot. So the plate umpire Phil Cuzzy will look it over. Tomorrow, Doc Gooden takes the mound. Rayel Carmier will be on for St. Louis. actually appeared to come up and hit Ozzy in the hands. Hit near the foot that came up and deflected off his hands still on the bat. Two men away, Bernard Gilkey, who can steal a base, is on first. Draws the throw and he gets back. Gilkey has 10 stolen bases. The Cardinal leader is Greg Jeffries with 31. The league leader is Vince Coleman with 38. Green is saying he probably will not put Coleman back in the lineup until the decision comes down in Los Angeles. They are now saying that probably will come down on Tuesday. But they've been putting it off from day to day. They want to be absolutely sure. Let's have a day game tomorrow in St. Louis. They fly to Montreal and open a series with the Expos Monday night. Foul ball down the left field line. They're going to Montreal, Bob, just at a time that the Expos are playing well again. Montreal started the night nine and a half back. Phillies won, Expos did, so they'll stay there. But with two full months to go, certainly within striking distance. Although the schedule isn't the same anymore, Bob, since expansion, you don't get that many cracks at teams ahead of you anymore in your own division the way it was up to last year. There's a line drive base hit going. No, Thompson diving. He didn't make the catch. He trapped it. It's a base hit. There are runners at first and third. From here, it looked like Ryan Thompson might have caught the ball. The first base umpire, Ed Montague, was galloping full speed into the outfield. And he said that Ryan Thompson caught it on the first hop, that he trapped it. We'll show you. Always a risky play on the AstroTurf. And you saw the big splash. I bet you the umpire called this ball off the splash. Watch it. There comes the water, and that's pretty well proof that the ball hit the turf before it got in the glove. The glove does not bring up water like that. The ball does. Well, now, wait a minute. The glove would kick up some water. <laughs> I agree with you, but I think it was a trap. But your, your glove also, as wet as it is out there, I think would make a splash. Well, that, if, if that had been an out, that would have made a big splash for Eric Hillman. But right now, he talks to Todd, or rather to uh, Mel Stottlemyre, who will leave the mound and leave Hillman in there. 
How many games do you do where splash becomes part of your description? <laughs> well, not many. No Stottlemyre on his way back. And now the Redbirds, hoping to put the game away, have first and third, two men down. But they have Brian Jordan as the hitter. Jordan, one for three, doubled his last time at bat. This is really a crisis for Eric Hillman. It is low, ball one. Well, the Mets will pass through the middle of their batting order at least another time during this game. It's important to keep it a two-run contest here. Cardinals now have collected ten hits. They do a lot of hitting. They have a 274 team batting average. Beautiful breaking ball, one ball and one strike. They do not use the home run to score runs, but nonetheless, they know how to score them. And they've been living with their offense for the last three weeks. They were pitching beautifully until about three weeks ago. The pitching went into a slump. They've got quite a few pitchers on the DL right now, including Mike Perez. Line drive base at the right field. Coming home is Bernard Gilkey. The Cardinals have a four to one lead. Brian Jordan, a hard single to right. That brings in Bernard Gilkey. And Dallas Green is on his way to the mound and Jeff Ennis will be coming in. Well, frustrating for the manager, his starter had two outs, bases empty. But three consecutive hits and the Cardinals have added to their lead. And that'll be it for Hillman. Ennis will come in and then in the next half inning, the pitcher's spot will be due up first. So the Cardinals lead it by three now as Jeff heads to the mound and this call to the bullpen is brought to you by New York Telephone, keeping you connected to those you care about. I learned to hit with the broomstick and bobcat. That cap would spin and curve and that made me a good hitter. <laughs> What I enjoyed most was putting the uniform on every day. It's playing baseball. One of the greatest honors of baseball getting in a Hall of Fame. Well, I've been American Express a member since uh, 1974. American Express is welcomed at the Hall of Fame and a lot of other places that bring out the kid in you. This summer, after spending a long, hard day at the beach, get ready for a night of action so hot it'll blow you away. We're armed. I can accept no one. We're dangerous. I can lie to that. Time tracks and kung fu, the legend continues. Let's go party. Now you're catching on. This ain't no day at the beach. Wednesday, starting at 8 on Channel 9. Jeff Ennis, busiest Mets pitcher, back out there again tonight. It's his 44th appearance of the season. And he inherits a situation with a run home two on, two out here in the seventh inning, trying now to keep it a three-run game. Eric Hillman giving up 11 hits in six and two-thirds, one strikeout, no walks. And he's responsible for up to two more men out there. And again tonight, as you mentioned, Eric Hillman did not issue a single walk. Jeff Ennis taking on the hottest hitter on the ball club. And a sidearm slider outside, ball one. Over the last 11 games, Todd Zeal hitting 375 at 11 games, 19 runs batted in. He has just been on fire. Tough assignment. And a strike call, one ball and one strike. St. Louis now with four runs, 11 hits. New York, one run on five hits. Eric Hillman leaving after six and two-thirds innings. Eric allowed four runs and 11 hits. Breaking ball outside, two and one to Todd Zeal. Todd had a home run in last night's Cardinal victory. This has been playing one one-run game after another. When you play one-run games with the Cardinals, you usually will lose. They have won 20 and lost only 12. Games decided by a single run. Hit of the year, playable in the short right. Eddie Murray at easy play. Grabs it for the out. And a good job by Jeff Ennis. He pops up a red-hot batter. Side retired. One run on three hits. Two men left on. And our Geo, Chevrolet Geo line score. St. Louis, four runs, 11 hits and no errors. New York, one run, five hits and one error. The hand. 
hands, to me, are the most important part of sports. And I began to realize my hands was quick when I started picking cotton. At that time, blacks could not play in the major leagues. In my mind, I was saying, this is something I really want. And sure enough, in 1953, I signed uh, with the Cubs. I've been a member of the Hall of Fame since 1977. I've been an American Express card member since 1989. American Express is welcomed at the Hall of Fame and anywhere else people go to dream. A violent hurricane leaves Darien trapped with a killer. You don't really think you're going to get away with this, do you? On the next Time Tracks, Wednesday at 8 on Channel 9. Do you know this number? 507-TIXX is the most convenient way to purchase Mets tickets. Now you can call the Mets ticket office directly to charge tickets by phone. Thank you for calling the Mets ticket office. Mets employees will assist you with exact seat selection for the games of your choice. In our $15 box seat, we would have field level in 157 E Lake Edwards. If you'd like, I could check something a little higher up, see if it can bring you closer in. For our lowest level, the second level, we would have seats in section 6, row G. That's right between home plate and third base. MasterCard, Visa, and American Express are all accepted. And the per-ticket service charge has been reduced from prior years. So to charge Mets tickets by phone and for all Mets ticket schedule and stadium information, call the Mets at 718-507-TIXX during business hours. You make the call. Joe Torre will make three defensive changes now as he settles in trying to protect his lead. Tracy Woodson playing out of position at first base, so Rod Brewer will take over at first. Brian Jordan has moved to left field. We are looking at Brian. And Ray Langford will play center field. Langford is now in center. Jordan goes to left. Gilkey comes out. Gilkey has had a tender shoulder. That's Rod Brewer now playing first base. And the reaction you hear in the background, Vince Coleman being announced as a pinch hitter batting for Jeff Ennis. And that's three behind. We're now in the eighth inning. And that's looped in the air to short center field dropping for a base hit. So Coleman hitting the first pitch has single to center field. So Jeff Ennis will face only one batter in the game tonight. He did a good job. Sort of a strange time for Vince. He's always enjoyed coming back here and playing as a Met. But uh, the off the field controversy surrounding him roundly booed now by the fans in St. Louis where he had some pretty good years at the top of that lineup. He probably had played as well this year as he had played since he was here in St. Louis playing for Whitey Herzog. For getting the off the field stuff, Coleman has had a pretty good year playing baseball. Well hit drive by Ryan Thompson. Going back quickly is Jordan. It's over his head. And the Mets are going to have runners on second and third. Ryan Thompson hitting the first delivery. He hit a screaming line drive immediately over the head of Brian Jordan. And the Mets have second and third and nobody out. Well, what's happening here, Bob, makes what happened last half inning very big. Brian Jordan got the base hit that gave the Mets a three-run deficit. And now they've come right back offensively with the two hits. A screamer to left field. No chance at all by Jordan to get back there. And Ryan Thompson moves runners to second and third. Nobody out. Good hitters do up. And Joe Torre heading for the mound. The way that ball was hit with authority has to be a little alarming to the Cardinal dugout. The bullpen has not had a great deal of time to get ready. A left-hander and a right-hander warming up. And Joe Torre is going to go to his bullpen. So we have a break in the action. And now here's a word from Upper Deck Baseball Cards. You followed him from the first day he signed with the team. You know he's not perfect, but on certain days in his life, he has been. The night he poured in 63 points. The time he crushed three home runs in the World Series. The day he found Dwight Clark in the end zone. And you wish at some point, at some moment in your life, you could be that perfect too. And that's why you cheer for him. That's why you believe in heroes. Things look pretty safe for Rene Orochik going into the eighth with a three-run lead and suddenly a Coleman pinch hit base hit. A double by Ryan Thompson and Rene is in the dugout out of the game after seven plus. He's given up a run on six hits and Lee Guterman, the tall left-hander, is in there. 
Ruderman started his major league career several years ago with Seattle. He's been primarily in the American League, pitched for the Yankees for a while. Cardinals brought him up from AAA on the 30th of June in the last month. He has appeared for the Cardinals 13 times. Four decisions already, two wins, ERA of about five. He's a big guy who throws hard, but control has been a problem for him at various times of his big league career. He had an interesting season last year, pitching for both the Mets and the Yankees of the same year. The Mets traded Tim Burke, who was struggling, to the Yankees for Gooderman. Gooderman had been struggling with the Yankees, so it was kind of a fair trade. Gooderman has proved that it pays to swallow your pride and hang around. He didn't get a major league contract this year, but he said, yes, I'll go to Louisville and pitch AAA. Sure enough, when somebody breaks down, you're back in the big leagues. And Gooderman has been pitching pretty well. Dave Gallagher is going to be a pinch hitter for Joe Orsolak. And Gallagher is a good pinch hitter. And a good hitter. Batting at 301 in the year, so Gallagher, a right-hand batter, faces Lee Gooderman. And he showed bunt, but didn't really mean it. One ball and no strikes. That's trailing by three. They have a chance to get that back to one in a hurry. Joe Torrey has had to go to his bullpen. This is a spot normally he would be using Mike Perez. But Mike Perez right now is on the DL like Mike Jackson of the Giants. Hit late a foul ball down the right field line. No play. Well, Bob, here it is, 12.20 Eastern time. Tell me about it. The trade has been made. Ricky Henderson heading to Toronto for minor league pitcher Steve Carsey and a player to be named later. Steve Carsey is the young guy from Queens who was pitching triple-A ball. He is an outstanding prospect. It's fisted into the air, running hard for the ball. Quickly is Okindo, and he makes the grab. That was quite a pitch by Guterman. He jammed Gallagher. Gallagher got hit right on the fist and loops it out to Jose Okindo. Inside-out swing. And cutting over, Okendo had the angle. Rod Brewer had to go straight backwards. And Okendo able to see it all the way for a big first out. Now it's Eddie Murray and Bonilla turning around right-handed for the first time tonight. Eddie Murray, 67 runs batted in. And an RB opportunity here. That's trailing 4-1. to one. We're now the eighth in St. Louis. No rain at all right now. And a fastball for a strike call. He has 1,629 career runs batted in. He has been moving up practically daily on the base hit list, the RBI list, and probably weekly on the home run list. It is under the air foul and back into the crowd. No play. And six foot eight inch Lee Gooderman. Now with a two strike count on Eddie Murray. Bobby Bonilla is the on deck batter. The Mets have been out hitting 11 to 7. They trail 4 to 1, and we're in the visiting eighth inning. Rene Arrocha, seven innings, allowed one run, seven hits. That's a low one away. He turned that over. One ball and two strikes to Eddie Murray. Eddie hitting a solid 285. Both Eddie Murray and Bobby Bonilla have a chance to get awfully close to 100 RBIs. One and two, the count. And a bouncing ball hit down to third. A run will score. Zeal throwing the first for the out. Rod Brewer handling the throw. Eddie Murray does not get what he wants. He does pick up an RBI. He wanted, obviously, the base hit. So in the game tonight, the Mets have scored two runs. Bonilla and Murray each have an RBI. Now it is four to two. And Bobby Bonilla will bat right-handed. Bobby has one for three, a run-scoring hit. Joe Coleman, the pitching coach, going out with a word about how to pitch to Bobby Bonilla in this spot. Yeah, first base is open. Not that you're going to walk the tying run on base, but a reminder that first base is open. Chico Walker is the on-deck hitter. And there's no way they want him to groove something or give in to Bobby Bonilla. It could be a tie game if that happens. Yeah, you've got to make him hit your pitch. If you walk him, you're not going to suffer too much. 
They have a right-hander, Todd Burns, warming up in the Cardinal bullpen. Burns recently acquired from the Texas Rangers. With Les Lancaster going down and Mike Perez going down, the Cardinals had to shop around in a hurry and try to get some help with their bullpen. Low and away to Bobby Bonilla. One ball and no strikes. Interesting crowd numbers here tonight. They had sold 50,948 tickets. 37,716 showed up on a day that's had an awful lot of rain. <laughs> Hit foul down the right field line. No play. So the tall skyscraper. Lee Gooderman with a count of one and one on Bobby Bonilla. Gooderman had some pretty good ball games for the Mets last year. Overall, you would not call it a good year, but while he was with the Mets, he'd have a streak of games where he pitched very well. He's got a pretty good sinker, even though he's a tall pitcher. The one-one delivery, wide with a fastball, two and one. Chico Walker hoping to get a turn at bat. Chico, by the way, is a much better right-hand hitter than left. And he would come up batting right-handed. Foul back, no play. Two and two on Bobby Bonilla. A man on second and two men down. Vince Coleman was a pinch hitter. Batting for Jeff Ennis. He led off, hit the first pitch, single to center. Brian Thompson drilled a double over the head of Brian Jordan off the left field wall. Lee Gooderman came in. He did a good job. He popped up Dave Gallagher. And then he got Eddie Murray on a ground out. It produced a run. Strike three call. Bobby Bonilla called out. Third time tonight that Bonilla has struck out. And he is really hot. And Phil Cuzzy, the plate umpire. He had words with Cuzzy earlier in the ballgame. He's got to be careful or he can be thrown out of the ballgame. One run on two hits and a man left on. Middle of the eighth inning in St. Louis. The Cardinals four and the Mets two. Now here's a word from Macy's. Dallas Green in the Mets dugout. Bobby Bonilla has been tossed by Phil Cuzzy. Tom McCraw tried to keep him away from the home plate umpire, but Bobby was not to be stopped. Obviously upset at the fastball on the outside corner by Lee Guterman. And Cuzzy rings him up right there. You can see that one coming. I don't think Bobby was going to settle the argument until he was either thrown out or somehow convinced he had gotten even with the home plate umpire. But uh, it was a borderline call and a pretty good fastball by Guterman near the corner of the plate. And the pitcher got the call. The Mets are gone in the eighth. They score a run on two hits and strand runner and trail by two. Bobby Bonilla was struck out for the third time today. He had argued earlier in the ball game. Wow. That looks like it's about a half a foot outside. Now he hit the target. A good job by Pappas of framing the pitch. But from that angle, Bob Murphy, it looked like that pitch was well off the plate. It looks like it missed the outside corner. So Dallas Green has to change his lineup around. Anthony Young is on to pitch in the bottom half of the eighth inning as we view the pitch one more time. He will not change the course of it. Vince Coleman is playing left field. We'll have a change at second and a change at third. And the leadoff batter. First here's Chico Walker now playing third. And Jeff Kinnis come in the game. Jeff is playing second. Mark Whitten, the right fielder. Two for three in the game tonight. A single and a double facing Anthony Young. The 2-0 delivery. A bouncer hit over the mound. Tough play. On the run, Bogart. No play. Infield hit. That is really an AstroTurf hit. There is nothing in the world that you can do about that. He hit down on the ball and took that skyrocket of a bounce over the mound. By the time Bogart could get there, it is a base hit 
third of the game for Mark Whitten. Now there's just nothing you can do about this on the turf. Cardinals have the speed to go with the ability to chop the ball down into the artificial surface. You know, when you see a hit like that last one, you know that Anthony Young must be in the game. Ground ball hits the third. Walker to second for one. Kept the first. Around the infield, a 5-4-3 double play. Let's see if Bobby Bonilla may have hurt his wrist or something on that last pitch. We watch him as he leaves. And definitely shaking that left wrist around as he gets ready to take the batting glove off. Two outs and nobody on. Ray Langford comes up for the first time in the game. Langford hitting at 262. Over 20 home runs last year. He has only three so far this year. Now he hurt his wrist early in the year. And a breaking ball by Anthony Young. I'll tell you one thing about AY. This new role of his as a setup man, he has really pitched well. He finally brought to an end that 27 game losing streak. He is a sinker slider pitcher, and he can throw over 90 miles per hour. He has a live arm. Two and one, the count on Ray Langford. He held on the swing, ball three, three and one. For a guy who's one and 13 this year, Anthony Young is one of the best known pitchers in all of baseball. He's at the all-time losing streak. And he missed outside, ball four, and he walks Ray Langford. So Anthony Young gives up a walk. And Jose Okendo will be coming to bat. Well, it's going to be interesting, Bob, to see how Anthony gets after things now. New role. The losing streak is finally over. And it's up to him to see where he goes from here during the losing streak. Everybody around baseball, opposing managers, coaches, pitching coaches, all talked about what a fine arm he had. We all know what a fine young man he is. Now we'll see where he takes it. Now that that bad part of his career is over, at least for the moment. I think he's going to do all right. He is a stand-up individual. And more than one club would like to have him. Pitch to Jose Okendo. Missing outside. The Mets are going to have to hit against Lee Smith in the ninth inning. He got his 35th save of the year last night. That's a Chico Walker, Charlie O'Brien, and Jeremy Burditz due to bat in the ninth inning. And the Mets are trailing by two runs, four to two. This game was just traveling at a fast pace until recently. Last inning, it has slowed up. And a throw over. If you're wondering why it's so late, it was being played fast. The game was delayed two hours and 15 minutes by rain. 7 o'clock game in St. Louis started about 9.15 in St. Louis. And his hit of the year toward the left field line. Coleman moving over. And Vince makes the grab. The side retire. No runs. One hit a man left on at the end of eight in St. Louis. The Cardinals four and the Mets two. Now here's a word from Budweiser. How do you capture a killer? You go after him. Hunter. He's a cop who lives up to his name. It works for me. Hunter. Sunday at 7, only on Channel 9. When you play the Cardinals, it's about an eight-inning game. If you don't get them by then, you're in trouble because Lee Smith comes on eight times in his career. He's had 30 saves, including 35 this year. He gained his Major League leading 35th save last night. He leads all Major League relievers in those roll eight points that determines the best in baseball. And it's his fourth consecutive year over the 30 mark. Lee Smith will face the numbers five, six, and seven spots in the Mets batting order. Just like Todd Huntley might be batting for Charlie O'Brien after Chico Walker leads off as the Cardinals into the ninth lead it 4-2. Lee Smith passed Jeff Reardon. It is the all-time saves leader in Major League Baseball, 390. Chico Walker leads off in the ninth inning, and the Mets need two runs to get even. Cardinals four runs, 12 hits, no errors. 
And the Mets 2-7-1 and one, and Lee Smith on the mound. He relieved in the opener of the series last night. He worked an inning in the third. He had a two-run lead. He gave up one run, a monster home run to Bobby Bonilla. But after giving up that home run, he retired the next three and the ball game was over. So Lee Smith. Big guy still throws hard. Throws a lot of breaking pitches, though. Swing out of his strike one to Chico Walker. Todd Huntley, who has home run power, is out on deck. Todd will be hitting for Charlie O'Brien. Miss pitched well, got beat last night in a low scoring game, 3 2. Tonight they're losing 4 2 in the ninth inning. Bouncing ball over the head of the third baseman. Ozzie runs it down, but it's a base hit. So now the tying run comes to bat. That is an infield hit for Chico Walker. And that's one of those AstroTurf base hits. You hit down on the ball on this lively turf. It really takes a skyrocket bounce. Ozzie just wanted to keep the ball in the infield. Pitch down and away, and that's what you've got to do. You cannot try to pull that pitch on this field. If you do, it's a ground ball to the second baseman. So credit Chico, who came only into the game hitting 187 left-handed with a good job there. He has a two for Fortnite to work with. And it originally looked like Hundley. Now it's going to be Jeff McKnight batting in that number six spot. Yeah, Dallas changed his mind. He did have Tom Hundley out there. Now what he'd like to get here is a single from Jeff McKnight. And Jeff has really done a dynamite job of pinch hitting of late. Then you can put up Todd Hundley trying to look for the long ball, although you have Jeremy Burnett's on deck, and he can certainly give it to you. But what you need here is to get two men on and then get your power up there. Jeff McKnight, the pinch hitter. And a ground ball toward the hole. Base hit going into right field. Chico around second, going on to third. The tying runs are on base and nobody out. So the strategy works well for Dallas Green so far. Jeff McKnight has about four pinch hits in a row. Well, the Cardinals have used the turf to their advantage all night long. Almost a one-handed swing by McKnight, who had that left hand come flying up off the bat. It was placed perfectly to the right of Rod Brewer. And the Mets with runners at the corners now, and tying one at first base is Hunley will face Lee Smith. Nothing going in the Cardinal bullpen. Once Joe Torre turns it over to Lee Smith, that is the end of it. Jeremy Burnett is the hitter. Excuse me, Burnett staying in there. Hunley still in reserve for the next spot if and when needed. John Franco, even now, is up in the bullpen, hoping the Mets will tie this game up, or even better, perhaps grab the lead. First and third, four to two, St. Louis, nobody out. Outside, one ball and no strikes. Jeremy in the game tonight is 0 for 3. Burnett has good power to all fields, and even the left fielder, Brian Jordan, will play him deep. Jeremy has a couple of opposite field home runs. Foul back, one ball and one strike. Jeff McKnight was having trouble pinch hitting the first part of the year, but he is in a groove now that is just incredible. The Mets lead the National League in pinch hits. And they have a pinch hitting batting average over the last couple of months of about 378. They're one of the strong features of the ball club. One and one to Burnitz. It laid a foul back into the crowd. One and two. Now it's St. Louis four runs, 12 hits. And New York two runs and nine hits. At one point in the game, the Mets have been out hit 10 to five. him with a high hard one and he set that fastball up beautifully and he got Burnett to chase one out of the strike zone. 0 for 4 for Burnett tonight and Lee Smith got him to swing at a pitch out of the strike zone. That's a big first out here in the night. Lee Smith following his pattern of struggling early in the inning like last night but then shutting the door 
And now it's Hundley stepping in, batting for Bogart. Todd has not done a lot of pinch hitting this year. For the most part, he's been the number one catcher. He has two hits and nine pinch hit at bats. The tying runs are at first and third with one man down, and Todd Hundley is the hitter. Todd, as you know, does have home run power. And he's a better left-hand hitter than right. It's over, strike one call. Todd has eight homers and 34 runs batted in. The Cardinal crowd very quiet right now. A little bit high, one ball and one strike. Well, they know the Phillies already won tonight. Can't blow opportunities like this when you're trying to either gain ground or simply keep pace. Losses like this, if they let this one get away, would be a devastating one. Okendo and Ozzie, the double play combination for the Cardinals. They hope they get their hands on a ground ball. Pop it up. Should be easy for Ozzie Smith in shallow left field. Two men down. But Todd Hundley has popped the ball up. Vince Coleman will be coming up. Vince came in the game as a pinch hitter in the eighth inning. He lined a single to center field, and then he stayed in the game going to left field. So the Mets are down to their final out. It's up to Vince Coleman to try and keep it going. Vince hitting 280. to go for New York. They hope to make it work. And a strike call to Vince Coleman. Ryan Thompson, who certainly has great power, is the on-deck batter. After Coleman's single in the eighth inning, Ryan Thompson Hit a line drive double over the head of the left fielder, Brian Jordan. Coleman scored a run. Leads the Mets by a wide margin in run scored. And a swing and a foul tip. Lee Smith with a two-strike count on Vince Coleman. Coleman is among the league leaders in runs scored and in multi-hit games. He has not played over the last week since the incident at Dodger Stadium except for a couple of brief appearances. Cardinal crowd getting excited now. St. Louis one strike away from a victory. Lee Smith looking for his 36th save. Boy, that just missed the inside corner. That was awfully close. But he had to take it. There's no way in the world he could have hit that pitch. Lee Smith ran it inside, then tried to run it out over the plate. There's the late movement on it. And fortunately for the Mets, they're still alive. There's not a w any way in the world he could have hit that pitch. It almost struck him out. One ball, two strikes to Vince Coleman. Now back, he got a piece of it. The game is still going. Smith, his 13th year of the big leagues. Boy, he learned his trade the hard way. He fit successfully at Wrigley Field, a small ballpark, at Fenway Park in Boston, a small ballpark. You really learn how to get the hitters out in tough situations when you pitch in small ballparks like that. Now he has the luxury of being in a big ballpark. He throws so hard, he can still make a mistake and overpower hitters into fly balls in the outfield. One ball, two strikes to Vince Coleman. Eric Pappas, the Cardinal catcher, wants to be sure they're on the same page here. 
although a wild pitch would not kill the Cardinals, it would just bring the mess within a single run. Now, if you're Vince Coleman, you've got to be saying, now what did those guys talk about? Fastball, slider, splitter, change up, whatever. 6'6", six, six, Lee Smith on the mound. Coleman is waiting. Swung on and missed, but he may make it to first base. A run comes in to score. He struck him out. The ball was in the dirt. Got away from Eric Pappas. That's not what they talked about out there. But it's what happened. And now it's 4-3. to three. It is 4-3, to three, a strikeout and a wild pitch. And a run comes in to score. Chico Walker coming in. It is a 4-3 to three game. Take a look. It's a splitter down in the dirt. It's off the glove of Pappas. Appeared catchable, but they've given Lee Smith the wild pitch. Always an unusual call when it's a ball that's swung on. And Vince Coleman alertly down to first base. And the tying run now out at second. So Jeff beat Knight. The tying run is on second. Coleman, the lead run, is on first. And the batter is Ryan Thompson. Over letter high for a strike call. Ryan is one for four. Laced a double to deep left field his last time up in the eighth inning. And now one of those one-run ball games. Mets lost 3-2 last night. It's 4-3 tonight. And it's hit high in the air. The game should be history. Waiting for it is Eric Pappas, the catcher. Grabs it and the game is over. And the Cardinals win it. Ryan Thompson fouls out to the catcher, Eric Pappas. In the ninth inning for New York, one run on two hits. And two men were left on. Back with a recap in just a moment. Now here's a word from AT&T. About the New York Mets. Now being called the worst team money can buy. Here's our man at the ballpark, Jeff Greenfield. There's something about a ballpark on a beautiful summer afternoon that can lighten the heaviest of hearts. Generation after generation, fans have come to places like this to revel in a simple boys game that can sometimes loom larger than life, capturing the imagination of millions, turning itself into the stuff of legends. Sometimes a ball club can embody the spirit of a whole community. They write books about moments like those. They make movies about them. But what happens when everything suddenly crashes back to earth, especially in a place that has grown to be very hard up for dreams. Moments like those do not make for very pretty pictures. Ball gets away and the runners move up. That's horrible. No other way to say it, that's just horrible. Nixon makes it back to first. Yeah, Little, League. Little League is much more exciting than this, I'll tell you that much. They need a whole new team. Meet the New York Mets, or as a feisty New York tabloid put it, the Mets. They have the worst record in the majors. They haven't won two games in a row since April, a dubious achievement no other team can match. Attendance this year will be less than half what it was barely four years ago. We're not making any excuses for the failure because we have stunk it up royally. What the hell happened? <laughs> Somebody else get fired? <laughs> for newly hired Mets manager Dallas Green, a 38-year veteran of the big leagues, it has been a season of frank and open dialogue with players and umpires. The Mets have not won consecutive games since April 16th and 17th. Anthony Young has lost 22 straight decisions, one shy of a major league record. Those two there has been one part of the Mets' sorry story that has captured the imagination of New York. The saga of pitcher Anthony Young, who, like some twisted version of the Energizer Bunny, keeps losing and losing and losing and losing. I see the beginnings of a fine character there. If he just loses and gets a record, then we'll develop into a full-blown New York legend. Last week, the media turned out with the enthusiasm of reporters invited into an execution to see if Young would tie a major league record of 23 consecutive losses. With the help of four Mets errors, he did. Off the glove of Saunders, it's going to be an error on Eddie Murray. And the ball dropped at second base. So another error charged to the Mets. 
Well, I think he's a lot tougher than some guys give him credit for, and I think I think he's living through hell right now. Are you embarrassed, frustrated, pissed off? I mean, is there is there one way to describe how you feel about this, about about <clears throat> setting this kind of record? Well, no, I'm more embarrassed because I know I'm a better pitcher than that. One of the theories is that the Mets got rid of their scrappy, dirty shirt ball players. Do you think there's anything to that? Well, I like those kind of baseball players. I like the guys that I like the guys that aren't afraid to dive and, and scrap scrap for a win. Do you have any of those guys? We have a few. Is it tougher to play well when a team is you know, has fallen on these times? Uh, it's it's just tough all the way around. Uh, there's been times where where I've struggled, or the team struggled, where uh, I kind of drag into the ballpark. How much fun does it take out of it? Uh, yeah, nobody likes to lose. Uh, you know, everybody wants to win. Somebody's got to lose, and it just happens we're losing. If there's any consolation for these Mets, they are unlikely to become the worst team in Major League history. That record is also held by the Mets, but it was very, very different back then. Vinegar Ben Mizell dishes up a pitch which Joe Adcock belts into oblivion. Say what you may about the Mets pitchers, but never call them stingy. In 1962, the Mets' first year in the league, they lost a record 120 games, but it didn't matter. Their manager, Casey Stengel, was a living legend, and they lost in such inventive, endearing ways. It's 1962, the Mets lose yeah. 120 games. Yeah. They're the worst team probably, one of the worst teams ever, and people, and, and New York falls in love with the them. history of the world, the worst team. It was marvelous. But why do people fall in love because, with a loser? Because they lost with charm. It was almost a matter of pride for New Yorkers that the Mets were so bad back then. In 62, they were lovable. Casey Stengel was here. And they were so bad, and almost became good. You know, when a movie is so bad, it almost becomes halfway decent. So what's different now? Now the Mets are supposed to win. The way they won the World Series in 1969. The way they won the series again in 1986. Now they've got the second highest average payroll in the majors. They've imported out-of-town millionaires like Vince Coleman, who'll make $2.3 million this year. Brett Saberhagen at $3 million. Eddie Murray, $3.3 million. Bobby Bonilla, $6.2 million. Failure just isn't cute anymore. To lose at these prices is terrible. I mean, if they had the least bit of class and imagination, they would run out onto the field tonight with their pockets stuffed with money, run up to the stands and throw bills at the people. Give them their money back. Here, we're lousy. I'm no good and I can prove it. Here, take your money back. For the Mets, once touted as the next baseball dynasty, it has come to this. The big story was whether Anthony Young would break the record for pitching the most consecutive losses in Major League history. In that unhappy quest, the Mets were successful. Anthony Young lost again. We'd all like to do nothing more than win a baseball game for him and for the New York Mets and for the fans. What's your thoughts right now, Anthony, now that you have such a record? Well, I had a record, now I hope y'all can leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> At the rate the Mets are going, over Murray's head, they will lose about 110 games this year, still shy of the all-time record they set in the first year of the team's existence. But remember, sports fans, Records are made to be broken. Now, I know it looks bad. I mean, losing 20 of your last 23 games is definitely not a good sign. But if you're a Met fan, take heart and remember, it's not over till the fat lady sings. God bless us.